What's going on guys, Briar Rabbit here. Today I want to talk about Call of Duty Advanced Warfare and specifically some of the things that I think need to be addressed immediately uh, and also some things that I have a problem with that I'm not so sure can be addressed. So the first thing I want to talk about is that my initial impressions of this game are very positive. I love the boost jumping. I think it's fast and it's powerful and it makes the player just feel awesome. Like almost like a superhero type of soldier. It's very, very cool. However, there are a few issues that just have me kind of saying, is this game going to last, you know, a year or six months or a month? And the first one of those issues is the lag. Now, I believe that lag can be fixed. I've seen it happen before in a Call of Duty game. Black Ops 2 came out and it had terrible lag and they fixed it somewhat. It never got as good as some of the other Call of Duty games. I believe that this game we're gonna find out the network code is actually pulled out of Black Ops 2. I'm positive of this because it feels so similar on a network code basis. So the first thing is that, you know, the kill cam. The kill cam shows two different events or a different event than what you just witnessed as a player. You know, you see a guy come out of a doorway, you start firing at him right away. He kills you, you watch the kill cam and you find out that, you know, according to his camera, he came out of that doorway, you were standing there like a chump for two seconds while he aimed, fired, and killed you. You know, there are two different versions of the same event and, uh, you know, that's something that is really discouraging as a player. So I'd really like to see them, you know, fix the lag, fix the lag compensation and get this network code to be much, much faster. With the increased player movement, you know, they really need top-notch network code here. There's also wide speculation that this game uses true skill matchmaking. Uh, true skill matchmaking is a system that matches players up based on their skill level. This needs to be changed as quickly as possible. In theory, it may seem like a good idea to have games formed of players of equal skill, resulting in closer matches and more competition at every skill level. In the end, I believe it degrades everybody's experience. The single most important factor to setting up matches needs to be the player's connection to each other. This will reduce lag in the game and the need for lag compensation, making for a much more enjoyable online experience. Next, I want to talk about the hit detection. To be perfectly honest, I think it stinks in this game. This, this probably has to do a lot with the lag in the game, but it really needs to be addressed. The design of the game limits ammo for players, making it important that the player considers this both while creating classes and in the heat of battle. However, the strategic value of this is lost when a weapon that should kill in four shots takes a half dozen or 12 shots to actually down somebody and I'm not talking about missed shots I'm talking about accurate shots you know your red dot sight is right on his chest but he's just not going down this is kind of it's further exasperated by the fact that the player's death animation is a little bit deceiving they players kind of fall to their knees they don't actually you know just drop right away uh, so it's actually a little hard to tell is a player actually do trying to do a drop shot or are they actually dead? So you actually end up wasting a little ammo. I think we'll get used to that player animation over time, uh, but it's frustrating right now, but the hit detection really needs to be improved. So next I wanna talk about the spawns and oh man, this really needs to be fixed. I have not seen spawns this bad in a really long time. In TDM last night, I actually spawned right next to my dying body. I watched it fall. It had not actually hit the ground yet. The enemy was still firing at it. When he watched me spawn, he just moved his aim over to me and killed me again. In free for all, I routinely will spawn right next to another player who is spawning. Whoever starts running forward first instantly get shot in the back. It is one of the most frustrating things you can possibly have happen to you in a Call of Duty game. They need to get this fixed immediately. Now, so far in this video, I have really focused on issues that could be easily fixed with updates, patches. The next one, however, is gonna be a little harder to address. In previous Call of Duties, the maps were really designed to promote confrontation, allow for flank routes, uh, offer some PowerPoints and be learnable and it's, you know, strategically useful. 
In Advanced Warfare, they introduced the boost jump, and it seems to have informed every decision they've made designing the maps for this game. The problem that this has caused is that nearly every map in the game is a series of huge, wide open areas with buildings and a huge number of access points to said area. They are wide, wide open. It's like having six of the down plane areas from Modern Warfare 2 Afghan map all next to each other. This has created a sort of chaos in Call of Duty that is new to the series. The game has changed from navigating an area and using cover and map knowledge to your advantage, from capturing a domination point and trying to cover two or three doors or windows your opponent, your opponent may come through, to a purely Twitch-based shooter. The number of ways opponents have to enter an area are countless. And this, these areas are so wide open that they could come around the corner from across the map and instantly gun you down. It's frustrating. I like the idea of boost jumping. I think it's fun and it's implemented in a way that makes the player feel fast and powerful. I wish the developers had showed some constraint when designing the levels though. So many of the levels seem to be wide open areas with rooftops scattered throughout, more corners than you can possibly check in dark areas with character models that are predominantly black hiding in them. It feels less about strategy and more about reaction time than any Call of Duty I've played to this point. An alternative would have been to design more, you know, kind of standard Call of Duty levels in which players could use the new abilities to surprise enemies and navigate quickly and flank and get to areas that would be inaccessible otherwise. The last thing I want to talk about is sound. Sound whoring in Call of Duty is a controversial subject. In Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, they have seemed to eliminate it altogether. It is impossible to hear the footsteps of your enemies or locate their gun sounds using a surround sound headset. This takes tools away from players and I hate that. As the game sits, the only tool the player has to know enemy activities is the very good minimap. Very good except for one fact, all of the perks available to new players are centered around stealth. If you want to stay off the minimap, nearly all of the early unlocks are given to you expressly for that purpose. Low profile, blind eye, cold blooded, blast suppressor, silencers, all these perks are very early unlocks, if not unlocked by default, and are used to keep you hidden. So Sledgehammer went and designed the best minimap of all time and made it completely unreliable. This combined with the total absence of directional footsteps noise and wide open map design has created a game where the tools of awareness, solid map navigation, and skill have been set aside. This makes me a bit sad. A number of the issues I have with this game so far can certainly be addressed. Lag compensation can be toned down, and true skill matchmaking can be abandoned. Sledgehammer can increase the sound of enemy footsteps and reduce the effectiveness of the stealth perks. And hopefully they will. To me, Call of Duty has always been a fast-paced arcade shooter with deeper strategic underpinnings for those who cared to look at it. In this game, that seems to be missing. But the game is less than a week old, and I could be missing the deeper aspects to this experience just because I haven't played it enough. But a game has to hook me enough at the beginning to keep me playing long term. I have played Call of Duty on a nearly daily basis for years, and I certainly am not making the decision to change that now. But for the first time in a long time, it's definitely an option.